Mystery box, mystery box. We've got some mystery boxes. Look at these. All the way from Australia. Ended up on my doorstep just the other day. And these are total random acts of kindness. Gifts from two longtime viewers and followers of my channel. Ronald and Steven. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for these. I can't wait to open up these boxes and see what is inside and share them with all of you, my viewers, here on this channel today. Uh, something to take your mind off things and see what we've got in here. So nice to see some generosity and kindness in the world. And uh, I've got my knife ready, so we're going to do a live unboxing here. Get all these open up. Everything's going on the table, like I said. And there's a bonus around at the end, too. I know you guys have been wondering, why have I not gotten around to building these gas stations? We'll talk about that at the end of the video. And we're going to take a closer look at all five of these very interesting workshop collect and build gas stations, which I've never seen before. So we'll stick around for that. Yeah. All right, let's get ready to rumble. We're going to do a live unboxing here. As promised, guys. Get the knife through this first box. I don't know if one is from Ronald and one is from Steven. I'm going to assume that these are... Uh, Maybe one from each of them. I'm not sure if it's a collaboration with just two boxes, but either way, it doesn't really matter too much. I don't think, anyways. We'll find out as we open these up. One has got a fair amount more tape than the other. All right, that one's open. And that one is open. A little bit of tape on the kniff. Okay, put, this, put the knife away. Put the garbage away, one at a time. I'm gonna start with the lighter of the two boxes. Very cool. We've got some packing in here. Hopefully the camera is capturing all of this. Let's go in for a closer look. Ooh, this looks interesting. We've got one large box in here by the looks of it. Oh my, okay. Oh, what is this? It's not even, uh, some of it's in English. Oh, it's a Tamika garage. Tamika. Oh, wow. This obviously is in the theme of the gas station you guys have been bugging me to build. Wow. Well, not bugging me. I just, I got to make time for it. I got a whole bunch of things on the go, but now I've got even more reason to build those gas stations. Check it out. Holy smokes. The Tomika Rama Vintage Tommy Tech comes with some mini figures. Check it out. I hope that's showing up on the camera. Oh my, we're going to grab the camera, bring it in for a closer look, of course, but this is friggin' cool. Pardon my French. Okay, we're going to just set that aside for a second. That is awesome. Holy smokes. Very, very cool. Thank you very much, guys. This is awesome. Looking for a date on it. I see a copyright, but I don't see any date on it. Although it looks like it's never been uh, even on a shelf, and it says 164 scale right there. So we're going to put that over there with the other gas stations. Well, the, with the gas stations, because that's not a gas station. That's a sales lot for vehicles. This one is substantially heavier. And uh, hopefully we can see this. Oh my goodness, I thought there was a layer of bubble wrap at first. This, this is all individual vehicles bubble wrapped together. Separately, I mean, so that they don't get chipped. Oh my goodness. Look, at we've got variations upon variations of Hot Wheels. Wow, guys. Thank you so much. Steven, is this your personal collection that you had up on eBay for... You know, quite a, quite a good amount of money because it's worth it. I surely hope that you kept uh, some of your prized pieces, but thank you so much. We're going to get through all of these right now. I'm just trying to figure out how the best way to do that is. I think we're just going to take them out one at a time, get them onto the table. We're going to go in for a closer look afterwards and talk about the variations. But here we've got a Unimog. This would be from about 1991 through 94. And these, I think these are the ones that you had on eBay for a little while. Wow, we've got another Unimog, the white wheel version. And 
yet another white wheel version. So I don't know, is there variations amongst even these ones? It's hard to say off the top. I have to do a little inspection. Not seeing any difference yet, not even on the base. Could just be two of a kind on that. Wow, so many army Unimogs. Here's another one with the white wheeled tri-blade or snow blade on them. And another one, got another Unimog here. Another white wheel center construction tire Unimog. And it looks like we're into Hummers. I don't want to miss any Unimogs. Okay, now I'm just going to check my cameras here and make sure that I'm capturing this the best I can before we proceed any further. All this excitement has brought Nina to the Diecast Museum. She is wondering what is going on with the garage. So we're going to go in for a different look, a closer look at the garage from the other side of the lens here, as well as what has come out of the box so far. We've still got lots to go through here, as you can see. This is more what I'm seeing. And uh, here, let's go in for a close look at all these cool Unimogs. As you can see, we've got some rare variations, the black center tire, uh, and then three of the white center tire so far. And well, let's take a look at this um, parking garage or sales garage from Tomica Limited Vintage. And as you can see, 164 scale, some very nice cars. So I think it's a bit newer than most of the Tomica that I have, which just because I I had it nearby, I was doing a big sortation, I figured I might as well just show you my very best Tomica cars. Right off the hop, here are my very best, and they are quite old. I picked these up at a uh, vintage flea market a couple of years ago, and as you can see, these cars are perfect examples to find their way into this garage so very cool older stuff from a collector not a chip on any of these so we're definitely going to have these as part of that display oh there's the gallwing mercedes very very cool gallwing door mercedes got a couple of those so without hijacking this mystery box unboxing because certainly we've got enough to look at already i just wanted to show you what kind of cars are going to go in that tomica um garage station sales station and then of course we've got the gas stations which are also 164 scale cool so we've got the cameras set up at a different angle now we're going to go in and continue to look at the vehicles as they come out that way you can see what i'm seeing as far as the mystery element of it goes we can also see the cars up close, which is going to be a whole lot better. Uh, very cool. So this is a Hummer H1. Not sure of what year this particular model is from, but we will figure it out as we go. We've got some research to do, obviously, with the variations. And Hummers coming out here. Look at, here's an older one. This is the anti-drug unit. Very, very cool anti-drug unit. And uh, it's got the tri-blade wheels on it, white plastic top. So that one would be from the blue card era. Here we have another one. Not sure if that's going to have a variation or not. We're going to have to inspect them after the video because I don't know how many cars are in here. How many has Peter sent? Likely quite a few based on the weight of this package. We've got a couple duplicates perhaps oh here are my favorites these ones have the gun on them up on the roof the rotating gun these are metal on metal or plastic sorry plastic chassis 1991 copyright the very coolest of the hummers from hot wheels first release first release and there's another one to add to the army uh, I think there's some, going to be a paint variation, perhaps. Well, not on this one. These are the tan versions. Still very desirable. Here we go with a variation. And I know I'm looking for some of these for the wall. My wall display of every Hot Wheel ever in, created from 1974 right through to present day. So uh, we're going to have to check that out also towards the end of this video after we get all these cars unboxed. Oh, the limousine. 
spelled limo z e e n limousine very cool cars shiny as all get out and it looks like we may have two of that as well very cool that's the same car i believe i doubt we're gonna have room here for all the cars but we'll see and I think I was looking for a better condition version of this white limousine. I do believe also there are variations in the tampo, light pink versus dark pink. So something to observe there. But that is a very early release in the early 90s. And uh, here we have something towards about 1995 or 96, maybe 97. It actually says limousine right on the side. Now you can see, uh, well, it's in some handwriting, so might be kind of hard to decipher for so i'm just seeing it quickly we've got another one of those cars so we've got some nice duplicates for sure much like me i tend to collect two of everything well now i've got even more and here i think we've just got yes didn't i say light versus dark pink in the tampo stripe so indeed peter has sent me both of these uh, variations very cool these will be ending up on my display wall in the background which of course surrounds the hot wheels room we're going to look at that in a moment but right now far too much goodies coming out of the box to stop and take a look we're going to just tilt down a bit here as we make room for more vehicles coming out of the package coming out of the box packaging cool the hollywood limousine I don't know that I have this one. This is going to be a later release, probably into the early 2000s. And maybe a five-pack release. I'm not really sure. Oh, and we've got another one of these uh, limousines here. The white looks like another uh, brighter dark pink variation. A lot of limousines. Limousine. And here we have another one. Bratatatat says on the side. A big, huge exhaust uh, puff explosion. Isn't that cool? Uh, bang and blam. All these good adjectives for loud noises. Very, very cool. Oh, this is fun. We've got another one here. We've got another Hollywood limousine. This one's in a little bit better condition, too. Not to say the other one was in bad condition, but we've got two of the Hollywood versions of this car. And I'm not seeing a variation off the, off the top there. We may have to move some of these cars aside as we go through this video, because now we've got the Mercedes. Um, which model is this? It does, of course, it doesn't say, and am I struggling to remember? I think it's the 300. SEL, but I could be wrong. Probably wrong. Someone correct me in the comments, of course, please and thank you. Although I'll find out after I'm done this video, once I start to try to find the home for them. Here we have the Canadian. I thought this was a Canadian international release. So I guess it could be have, could have been released in Australia or maybe it found its way to Australia. But usually these gold seven spokes were indicative on that car of a Canadian release. Might have just circled the globe and found its way back home after 30, 40 years. Here's a beautiful condition, uh, red version of this Mercedes. Um, oh, it's bothering me so much that I can't remember the three number designation right now of this car. Oh, I want to say maybe it's a 540 or it's, geez, it's not the 380. The 380 is the four door model that Hot Wheels made. So I think it's a 540. Another beautiful example. And here's one. I think this one is from the... Um, hmm. I believe this one is from the Father-Son series of 1994. It's like a Father's Day two-pack special. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. And it's not a car I have either. So that is quite cool. At least not loose, anyways. Oh, we found another limousine. This one has the uh, Island Tours on the hood. And the uh, nice looking lady on the driver door. Island Tour limousine. Just when you thought you'd seen every limousine. And also, how many more times are you going to hear the word limousine? 
<laughs> well, maybe that would be the last time. Here we have another Mercedes. Is this a is this a variation? It could be. It very well could be. All other things about this car appear to be the same. Right down to the wheels, the paint, the interior, and the windows. But one has a gray base, one has a blue base. Factory rivets, as we can see. Gonna have to look into that. Never seen this car before, and I certainly don't have it in my collection. Could be uh, a hard to find version. And oh, uh, <laughs> what did we find? Another limousine. Uh, no variation here to note, just another Island Tours limousine. Start a drinking game. Get out your orange juice. Start drinking. Oh my goodness. A surplus of limousines. All right. Settle down on the limousines. Limousine. How many times can you say limousine? Did we count how many times we said limousine? And we've got another Mercedes here. I believe it's the same one that we just saw, both in perfect condition. Very nice. The box is still thick, as you can see. Very thick with cars. And we've got, oh my goodness, I'm not going to say it again. It's the same as the other three. I'm just going to park it over there on top of them. Save your ears from the limousine. The limousine needs to park properly. <laughs> Ah, the first beater of the bunch. We've got what appears to be an older change color or color racers, as they were known. These were produced from 1988 through till about 1993. And uh, this one has seen better days, but it would have changed color from blue to white under hot or cold water or even just ambient air temperature. So it's a nice little relic and it still rolls amazingly. Oh, what have we found here? What have we got? A limousine. <laughs> okay, got another one. I'm going to count those up after. So, you really liked your Mercedes and your limousines, it would seem. Uh, here we have another one of those. Yeah, that's the same. Very cool. Very, very cool. Collects like I do. Mercedes. Okay, and here is the blue version as well. Not seeing any difference here so far. Possibly the common color. I think we're running out of room once again. Ah, another Mercedes. Another Mercedes, look at that. I'm almost certain now it's a 500 something. Maybe I'll remember by the end of this video. Another color racer. This one is the Ferrari 348, also known as the Race Bait 308. And uh, this one, I believe, went from like a white, it was usually like a pinkish color, to a bright red. Some of them had tampos on them, some did not. It appears that there are no tampos on these ones, or perhaps they've been worn off through the passage of time. Ah, here's another color racer. This is the Corvette. The custom Corvette is what Hot Wheels called it. Released in the same time period, or well, early 90s anyways. And uh, it went from, I believe, blue to purple or white to purple. All of mine are locked in this dark purple color. For some reason that some cars really do tend to lock in one color or another. I think it really does depend on climate though and storage methods. So it's a C5 custom Corvette. Here we have the Porsche 959, and it also is a color racer. This one's kind of in that in-between. It would have gone yellow to red, and as you can see, this one does have some tampos on it. So the tampos would actually fade in with the color, so you'd get like different graphics. Basically, when it was yellow, you would just see blue and red, and when it was uh, red, you would just see blue and yellow. So kind of clever, and of course, all metal, these older cars, not like the color changers of today which are mostly plastic i think here we have the 57 t-bird locked in the uh, salmon pink color that i often see it this one would have gone white to a fuchsia pink back in the day i do actually have quite a large collection of color racers through the years including this one which has the 
I believe this is a 1995 release, 1994 release, as it has the plastic top. This is the Ferrari Testarossa, and it would have gone white to red. Metal base. Now, color racers really aren't worth much to this day unless they're in mint condition, and certain models command a lot of money, uh, specifically the Hot Bird and the Mustang SVO. But these other ones are very interesting nonetheless, and they're great uh, quality Hot Wheels from yesteryear. So we've got the Porsche. Uh, I believe this is the 9... Oh, it doesn't say either. 930? Oh, yeah, it's not the 930. What is it? I can't remember. Porsche, Porsche Turbo. Ah, another 55 Chevy. So we got that right there. Both of them locked at the same color gradient. And we've got another Mercedes. This is from the mainline, I believe, year 2000, if memory serves. It's a nice one. Nice graphics. And the Lamborghini Countach. The Countach. Very cool. Would have turned white to pink. Another change color. It's actually in very good shape other than some oxidization and being locked at one color. And perhaps it'll change. A quick way to check is just put your thumb or hand over the roof. And it's still changing. Look at that. This one's actually... These cars might not all be locked. In fact, this one might go quite white in the warmth of my palm. It's definitely gotten a little bit whiter, hasn't it? So I imagine that these will work, certain cars anyways. Other ones you can kind of just tell by looking at. Yeah, the pigments just get all locked up. I don't know if this one will do it. In the meanwhile, oh, there's a beauty. This is one I've had since my childhood. Another 55 Chevy in really nice shape other than a few of the typical. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, the plastic ones do change color a whole lot easier than the metal ones with the uh, passage of time. We'll hold on to that one while we're looking at this Chevy here. And uh, cool car. Mine locked at this color too. It never was able to change again. But it used to go a dark purple, believe it or not, uh, to this metallic pink. It was really one of the coolest looking cars in my change color collection. We're going to just give a different camera pan here to allow for more vehicles to enter the fray. And did it change color? No. So you can see that some of them do lock up. Ooh, this one's in nice shape. Uh, it's got a few flea bites around it, but uh, another race bait. Ferrari 308. And it looks to be in good shape. Try the old color color change method. Got another Lamborghini Countach. As you can see, this one's a little pinker than the one I took out of the box, probably based on the temperature. I wouldn't be surprised if it also changes color. Uh, I don't think it's changing color. It might have a little bit on the snout. We'll see if this Lambo changes. Another T-Bird. Another 57 T-Bird. She's seen better days. Got a little bit of road rash on the roof. Look at that. The Lamborghini still changes color nicely. Although this one's missing its 31. Or perhaps it never had a 31. Could be a variation. Could have gotten smudged off. Hard to say as it does have play wear. And we're getting down to the uh, final two layers here. We've got another Mercedes. Which we've seen this one already. Is this silver version. And there it is. Oh, Sheriff Patrol. Got the Sheriff Patrol car. This one will probably change color too. It will go white to dark. We'll hold on to that while we go searching for more. A whole change color car collection here. I call them change color cars for the obvious reason that they change color, but they were never actually licensed or sold as change color cars. Here we have another Porsche 959. I've never seen this one change color before. And I don't know exactly what colors it turned. It's a later release. No. Well, it kind of, like the high parts seem to be changing, but should have changed to white by now with all that hand time. 
Ah, oh, yes, the old Nissan 300 ZX. Missing its uh, tampos. Should have included some yellow stripes. One of the few Hot Wheels models with opening doors, and one of my favorites. That uh, would be from about 1993, I think, that release in particular. So, we've got a uh, Ferrari race bait through it here locked in the white color. So, I'm not sure it's the exact same model as the one that we see here in red. Although it looks the same. Otherwise, I don't think it is the same because these ones clearly don't have any tampos on them. Whereas this one does. And here we go. We got another one of these cars. Kind of cool. Very cool. Nice smell of vintage coming out of this box. It's really quite nostalgic. A Testarossa here in the pinky mix. And a beautiful example of that 55 Chevy. Wow. Okay, that one's gonna that one's gonna be the display piece right there. Couple flea bites on the headlights, but it's a beautiful condition color racer of the 55 Chevy and I think it's better than the other color racers I have stick around to the end of this video and I will show you my color racers collection because I have them all in a 48 car case so you can see exactly where this collection is going to join with an existing collection and see if there's anything new to the collection or different another Ferrari 308 there Got one car left in the box, and it's a Sheriff Patrol, fittingly. I also got some uh, playwear and some goop on the hood. It's the roof. Very cool. Look at all these cars. I'm going to have to count it up. I don't even know how many there are here, but it looks to be about 60 to 100 cars. Thank you so much, guys. This is so generous of you. So very kind. <laughs> Look at all the bubble wrap. Okay, we're gonna have to get organized here. Hold on one second. All right, I've just filled my head with all of the research required to find out where and if these vehicles may find their way onto my display wall in the background. And as you can see, I've made a few little notes and I have identified some of these cars are going to the display wall. I've also retrieved my cases, my 48 car cases, filled with change color cars we're gonna look at that right after we place these cars yes this is going to be a long video but what else are you gonna do on a winter's day and here are a whole bunch more change color cars there are those ultra rare mustang svo color racers and a whole bunch more you're gonna want to stick around for as we cruise through uh, a total of what nine Four, two, four year cars, 96 color changer cars in total in those cases, as well as what uh, I have just received today in this random act of kindness. Uh, so anyways, we've got uh, the Mercedes 500 SL. I was just so close, but I could not figure out the name and designation of that car for the life of me while I was filming. But now I've got all the details on these cars. Uh, this is a known variation. Made in 2000, collector number 134. These are not from the 1997 uh, father-son two-pack. These are actually the 2003 uh, collector number 123. Possibly final run cars, actually. Last production of that casting by Hot Wheels. Although I must say they look very similar to the cars from the father-son, which only have a difference in that the plastic is darker on the base that matches the uh, same paint that you see here. And they had SP5 wheels instead of the PR5 wheel. So a little difference there. The Unimogs, I love collecting Unimogs. And I have a lot of them in my collection. I definitely pick up every one I can find. And this is a great addition. However, all of these variations are already on the wall. We're going to look at where everything is. We're going to slide by even the ones that we've already got. But uh, we're going to place the ones I don't have as we go. Which include, include these two Hummers. These are the H1 Hummers. Uh, there's a base variation here. One of these has a Malaysia base. There you go. And the other one has a Thailand base. It's upside down. Is it upside down? Well, no, it's not. There you go. 
So I already have a Thailand base. Now I've got the Malaysia base. I think that one is actually more from the blue card era. I don't really know where that one came from. Um, but this one is interesting to me because I actually had a space already aside for this casting. Just waiting for it to enter the fray. The plastic body camo with turret gun on roof. I have it without the gun, as you will see. Then we've got these ultra cool metal on plastic chassis ones. I already have this one, but again, just like the Unimog, super cool. I always collect army vehicles and, of course, um, basically any army vehicles whatsoever. So we've talked about all that. Uh, oh, we've got two more Hummers over there. Those are a 2005 mainline release, collector number 148. So I already have those ones. Well, that one, it's the same. The limousines. We've got a lot of limousines here. Um, there were some that I couldn't find on my wall. That was this one here, the Holly Weird. Uh, it actually says Holly Weird on the back door and fender of this car. It's from the limousine 1999 uh, Showbiz 5-pack. So that's why I didn't find that one or recognize it. I don't know. I haven't checked my five packs because they are packed away, but I'm going to guess I don't have that one. Most current version here, also from 2005, Island Tours. And uh, yeah, so which one did I not have? I don't think the limousines, I was missing any of them other than the variation I noted, which was, I'm not sure why I remember this, the light pink versus the dark pink in Tampo. Actually, the guides that I've read and even online when I went on to Wikipedia, the Hot Wheels fandom page, and Mike Zarnock's books, they don't mention a light variation of that one. I just somehow know of it. So I'm going to include it on my display wall, and you're going to see where it's going to go here in a moment. And as for the change color cars or color racers, well, like I said, we're going to get through those after we go to the display wall. So let's go for a little saunter around the diecast museum placing cars one of my favorite things to do all right so we're gonna need the light pink limousine you're coming with me and the uh that's the malaysia base hummer h1 the turret top h1 this car i did not have the five dot with the gray base so that one's coming for me and strangely enough, I didn't have this one either, 1998. Uh, it's just a mainline car, number 815, but I did not have that one on the wall. And, well, I don't I don't have the uh, five-pack cars on the wall, but I'll grab one anyways. I know where they're going to go. I'll take the nicer of the two. Where is it? Yeah, they're both nice, actually. That one's got a shinier base, but they both got some frosting on the sides. Ah, well, we'll take one. I do have a space where I'm kind of putting those. And uh, so that's that's the six that are coming to the wall. And the rest of them, well, you're going to see them in just a second because I've kind of quasi-memorized where they are. And all right, so the oldest one we are going to look at is the limousine. And there I have my example. I had to make room for an example here. Uh, right above some pretty cool cars. Oh, I only got two hands. Darn it. Need another hand. Don't tip. That that looks dangerous. Okay, so we're gonna take the light tampo version. As you can see, I think there's a definite tampo variation. I was wondering, is it UV uh, damage? No, I don't think so. The car's in great condition. Otherwise, while we're here, Larry Wood's collection. There's one right from Larry Wood himself, his own collection. Got a few of those baggy cars around. Uh, okay, so the next one we're looking at was the Hummers. There you go. So I had left some spaces here, actually. So we've got metal, light version paint. There's the plastic. That's a Thailand base. So we're going to put a Malaysia base down here. And then the uh, other Hummer. This is the plastic body with turret. That's going to go right there where I've been missing one for a long time. I had the plastic body here, no turret, and this one here is a metal body with turret. So I think we've actually completed, thank you very much, Peter and Ronald, we've, we've completed it. Um, it is complete, so there's no more Hummers needed on the wall. And these are, of course, my blue card collection cars. Some of them would have been faded blue cards. Uh, as we go, we're just going to park those 
cars right there because I can't really put them on the wall as we go. And looking at everything, there is a first release of that Mercedes 500 SL. This was a Canada only release, I do believe. 1990, no collector card number. And as we go, we're going to see the uh, multi packs. I've got the, I call them promo promotions or promos for short. So that's 1997. Oh, there we go, 1999. So this would just be anything that I have opened up. Five packs, uh, exclusive stuff. With this very cool high rise express. That's actually a crane company licensed Hot Wheels to put their company name onto a Hot Wheel. So that's that. Sorry if this is a little bit shaky and blurry. I'm going to bring the cars a little closer to me because, heck, we've only got three to place now. And I'm uh, going to put one of these right here. I'll come back for you. I'll look for more later. And while I'm down, while I'm down on my knees here, um, we're going to be putting the Mercedes number 815. Actually, it goes right behind this little Ferrari Moder Modena. I was going to say Moderna. Uh, and there we go. I've got a little sticker plaque for it right in front of a Ferrari race bay. So there you go. Thank you very much. I had a spot ready to go for that one. And we've got one car left. I'm going to put it in my pocket so I don't have to come back down to the ground here. There are the uh, red Mercedes in various variations. There is one that has a bright red base. Uh, gold 7-spoke and chrome 7-spoke. And the limousine. We've got the gold limousines there, 7-spoke. And a white wall. Which is pretty cool. There's the... Uh, Bam, bram, blammo, bammo, smammo limousine. Right in the whole collection of a bunch of noisy ones. Vroom, screech, boom, a splat, and rah, a bunch of noises, a bunch of mouthy noises. There's another limousine. That's the one that actually says limousine. So no variations on those ones, interestingly. Um... And uh, while we're moving along here, I kind of bumped the cars out as I needed. Where's this one go? I think we've still got a ways to go for it. Where do you go? Where do you go? There you go. You're all the way down here. So we are down at collector number, I think, 1015. This would be in the 2000 year, millennium year. year. And that's where that one goes. I had to make a little bit of space for that. But now we've got both examples. That is all the variations we needed there. And uh, moving along the wall. Um, just to have a last look at what we had. There's another limousine. It's from the uh, Work Crew series. And that was in 2003. Which is also where we found the... I don't think it's a final run. It might have been a final run. I don't think it was a final run. I think it's just a 2003 last production model. Maybe it was supposed to be part of the final run. That Mercedes 500 SL fits right in here. These cars are all sequentially in order, in case you're wondering. They go like this. If you're following. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I should use my words. Sometimes I don't have all the cars, but here we get into the final runs. That's a nice little Honda Civic there. Whoa, hard to find that one. But here we go, final run. So final run, usually always said final run, 2002. One says 2001, oh, three. So that one's maybe not in the right spot. It says 2002. I have to check that one out. I think maybe final run ran a couple of years. I may have a couple of these in the wrong spot. And I think that's pretty much it for I know I'm missing something, but this... Ah, the Hummer. There it is. 2005 Hummer. So that's the extent of my collection. It really only goes up to... I think this might be 2006, 2005, but then we're out the door. And uh, have not completed the placement of my massive Hot Wheels collection beyond 2005 or six. So... We're going to head back to the table, check out those 
color rain color racers which we've got here and of course so much stuff to look at in this video wow was not expecting this today guys oh boy wow okay i finally figured out where all those cars go and here we are back on the table here okay let's get back to it we're gonna check out some color racers from yesteryear I've got my point of view camera here all set up as well. So we're going to open these up together. Uh, let's go. Ooh, starting with this collector case. Very cool. Check it out. Got so many awesome cars in here. The Porsches are in here. The Ferraris. We've got the Rescue Ranger. Heck, we've even got a delivery van in here. That solid purple, and who could forget, steering rigs. Big old steering rigs. They just barely fit in there. There's a patrol car, much like the ones that uh, Peter sent me, but mine's, this one's locked in a, such a situation that you can actually see what it once said. Now, this particular case is my uh, crummier version of the cars. This one here. This case is where my quality pieces are. These ones are all kind of played with. But we're going to start with the played with and save the very best for last. Got the Baja Bug in here. The little Volkswagen Bug. That is super cool. Now, I haven't really tried to activate all the colors on these. Not in a long time, anyways. Uh, these ones, as you can see, some Countach, some Testarossa. The Solar CX-4. This is a bright one. Black wall wheels. Seen some racing action. The Thunderbird or Thunderburner, as they call it. Ford Thunderbird stock car. It's a long one. A couple T Birds in there. Various uh, Porsche colorations and tampos. Let's go for the second layer now. Which, as you can see, wow, got the '55 Chevys in there. There they are. Look at more Ferraris. 308. Some of these are in really nice condition, actually. I uh, I don't have all played with ones. They appear to be on the top. That one is like minty. Some minty Corvettes in here as well. It's the 75 Corvette. Well, it's not minty, but it's nice. Different colors. More Testarossa. Some of those pale versions of the 308. Ah, there's the hot bird. I do have one that is in very nice condition though. But this one has seen better days. And the 55 Chevys. There it is in the dark blue. Interesting. I think mine are they the same color. Yeah, close. The Australian climate has uh, affected the paint slightly differently, perhaps. <laughs> And there are my pink ones. These, uh, This one is from my childhood, actually. I remember this car has been in my collection specifically for a very long time. And this one I got at a later date because it's a darker pink. And now, I got a third one. So that is just beautiful. Nice collection of pink Chevys there. We're going to have to make some room. We're going to have to shuffle these around. Because I like to keep, whoa, I like to keep the uh, cars with the same type of cars, obviously. I do have one space right there, so I know that placing the uh, the one Porsche that I got, the 930, that's going to be pretty easy. There it goes. Uh, oh, look, there's a fifth one back there. I didn't even see that one. Okay, now for the uh, high value case. This case here, I bought some of these cars years ago on ebay for oh way too much a lot of money i spent good money on some of these cars there is the 959 change color car oh look i've got a little note what does it say what does it say oh my goodness there must be an easier way okay we're gonna pick up the whole tray and spin it around find out more about that car 959 milky yellow Auto Magic. It came from the Car Wash series. So that was a Car Wash car. Interestingly. There's another one from my youth. A little Jeep CJ7. This car I bought on eBay for I think $50. Even with that chip. I don't know if that was such a good idea. But 
I really wanted my SVO Mustang collection to be complete. And I did end up spending good money on that one. I think I got this one later on. Um, possibly for slightly less. Looks like it still might have a chance of changing color too. Don't really know. Haven't tried it. The front running Ford Fairmont was high on my list of desirable cars. These are kind of the harder to find ones. The 80s Firebird. And just finding color magic or color racer cars in good condition without chips. Never mind whether they're locked in color or not. Oh, well, there's another one of those. A little bit yellower. That is hard to do. So we've got the yellower and greener version. This one's probably the one from my childhood. I remember it was more of a yellow lock than a green lock. The BMW M1, another desirable casting. Condition is paramount with these cars. There's the custom Corvette. We've got a few of those. Split window 63, ghost flames on it. Oh, and what do we got here? This is a hard one to find. 65 Mustang. Very nice. This one might be in better condition, actually. Yes, it is. So I was thinking about displaying these at some point, but I just never have gotten around to it. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the second layer yet, have we? Boy, this is going to be a long video, guys. Long video. Here we go. Having way too much fun to stop now. These are the uh, newer color racers. you got the plasticky kind of... And apparently these are my more beat up ones. These are from about 1990 through 1994. This one's got a note off rodent, the Ratmobile. 1994 Color FX Monster Models 2-pack. $2 loose. That'd be in mint condition, so not worth a whole lot. And look at the uh, Ferrari. It's still got my handprint on it. They seem to work pretty good. Let's try this one again. They're probably locked forever. I have to do something with that. Look at it. We just did it again. Did it again. <laughs> There's my palm. I got a DNA print there. Very cool. So the new ones actually hold their color changing properties better. This is not a color changer. This is a cap car. So you'd use a little bit of explosives to fire them down a track. This one, I think that's an old color racer, actually. Really weird. And we have a random red line in here. That doesn't belong in here. Uh, it goes somewhere else. Uh, well, I mean, this one doesn't really belong here either, but whatever. There's a few cars that don't really belong in here, like this stock car. It's a Hot Wheels. Hmm. I'm going to find a new home for that. I'm going to find a new home for these ones, actually. We're going to need all the room we can get to add a few more color racers anyway, so we might as well keep them together. These are McDonald's cars, so they don't belong here either. It's like a whole bunch of random cars that just I've just suddenly discovered. These would have come with like a Happy Meal back in the 90s, perhaps. Those are Color Racer, Color Racer, Color Racers. And these ones here are the Convertible Series, so they don't really belong in here either. Convertible Series 57 Chevy, and these are all Convertible Series, actually. Well, no, maybe not that one. I don't know. I don't know what that is. That looks like a change color convertible. Oh, no, it's a convertible. Different short-lived series from the uh, early 90s. The Thunderbirds missing its trunk, unfortunately. So, well, that gave us uh, nine more spots we didn't have before. It's still not going to be enough for all the cars that I've been uh, sent here. So, we'll have to figure that out. And certainly not in this video. As you can see, this is going to be a big video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun here. And, uh, well, you know... Thank you very much, Stephen and Ronald. You guys have made my week. You've made my month. So I super, super appreciate it. Awesome. If you're after any of these old cars, check your flea markets. Check your what-have-yous. And, of course, happy hunting.